Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Uh, happy to be back on a, a Sunday morning. Um, I woke up to Twitter telling me um, the last night was daylight saving. I, I hadn't paid attention, um, but it explained why I was tired this morning. Um, let's transition over, but don't forget to do that. Okay. There we go. Um, so here we are. We're looking at the blog, how it is now. Um, we've got our main articles and our sub articles. Um, and you know, they all behave as expected. Um, let's see. I believe it was Synthwave. Nope. Retro is a lighter version. Um, it's not too harsh on the eyes. Um, so yeah, we are um, in a decent place. I, I did notice one thing this morning. Let's see if I can get it to show up. Problem is with random number generators. Um, it needs to generate an odd number of articles. There we go. So notice here that we seem to get this interesting jumping effect and maybe it's only because of the scroll bar that we're seeing here on the side so that scroll bar everything jumps in and then it jumps out um and we can solve that um the interesting thing is we don't get that with um, the columns that don't stretch. So I'm not sure why this is causing the other columns over here to block. We'll, we'll figure that out. Um, but today I really wanted to get into um, discussing. That's interesting. The chat's not showing up yet in the interesting. Um, I wanted to get into discussing um, the dates and um, and facades um, and where facades can help us. Oh, I also forgot. Um, they mentioned uh, on social media that um, analog is getting close to the 1.0 release. Um, so, you know, we, we've been doing analog in the stream, building the blog. Uh, it would be, it would be a good idea um, to go check it out and uh, and provide feedback to the team if you're at all interested in um, in in analog in in any way you know just you know build something quick and simple um, follow the documentation provide the team feedback um, as they move towards 1.0 uh, and you know even let me know let me know what you think of analog I've really been enjoying it. Um, it the, the meta framework adds some interesting ideas um, and I, I enjoy a lot of those ideas um, and, and some of the stuff they're doing doesn't necessarily belong in Angular core but works really really well with Angular um, and that's kind of the kind of the idea behind a meta framework right is um, taking something that that's already good and adding some stuff to it that just makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, definitely take a, take a, um, <clears throat> take a look and um, let the team know, you know, whether, you know, what, what they could do better, what you like, things like that. Um, I'm just checking social media. Um, <clears throat> sorry, man, my throat. Um, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit curious about today being um, being daylight savings. I wonder how many people are like me, didn't realize. Um, and so I'm curious about just, I'm watching my numbers um, on the stream to see how they, how they compare to like last Sunday and the Sunday before that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, let's talk about facades, right? Um, I think one of the best ways to um, 
look at facades is to tell a little bit of a story about um, this amazing library called Moment.js. Um, and if you're working in any kind of project that uses dates in the past, I don't know, we'll call it decade, right? If, if they were started in the past decade or so, you're probably using Moment. Um, and after a while, um, people started to sour on Moment. Um, <clears throat> so in September of 2020, this is now four years ago, um, but um, it was created in 2011. So, you know, fairly old library, but it was the best. Um, for a long time. Um, but what caused it to fall out of style is um, one, moment objects are mutable, right? Um, but there is a tree shaking. Um, yeah. So mo moment doesn't work with tree shaking. This is what actually, when I started hearing, um, you know, about moment falling out of favor. Um, and, you know, moment can get large. They've got ways around it. Um, and it, it doesn't um, modern. Yeah, they, you know, the time zone support is handled through the international object now. Um, but then, um, you know, Chrome DevTools says, hey, don't use moment, right? Um, if you look at your light script stuff. Um, which was kind of the final blow, you know, the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, on Moment. Um, and everybody started saying, hey, get away from Moment, right? Um, hey, Krishnala, Luxon is better than Moment. Well, it has um, it has definite, yeah. Well, you, you should stop using Moment. Um, and this kind of leads to our discussion about facades, right? Can I not select these? There we go. Um, but yeah, Luxon um, tends to be a good a good replacement for a moment. Um, you know, and it's created by the same team. Um, and I actually haven't used it, so maybe we'll use it. Um, but let's let's start first discussing um, discussing facades. So when we talk about facades, um, you know, let's let's say that we've got a few components in our application, right? And this could be any kind of application. Um, and um, you know what four will do fine. Um, it, it's to illustrate a point, right? So let's say that we've got these four components, right? And let's say we've got this library um, similar to like what happened with Moment. Um, another big um, example of this is the Faker versus Faker JS, where the uh, Faker team, um, well, the, the person behind Faker poisoned Faker, so it made it, um, it broke it for everybody out there. Um, and so suddenly everybody was having to change to the new Faker JS. Um, that is another issue, right? So here we have a library. We can call this moment or whatever. And this library is directly used in our components. And this this is this is happening everywhere. Um, I've seen this in all sorts of enterprise corporate environments, right? Where this library is used everywhere. And you know, let's let's pretend that this is a big corporate um, application. And so, um, you know, now 
we've got let's let's say that each of these blocks represents I don't know we'll say like we'll go big a hundred components right so each of these blocks is a hundred components and within each of these components we're using the library right um, and, and that seems normal right we're, we're using the library we're, we're using moment to get date and time we're using moment to calculate differences between dates we're using moment to do you know to format our dates we're using moment to do you know all the date time stuff that we do in our application um, but then moment falls out of favor right and there's this new library um, and you know Krishnala says they're using Luxon um, I think you know like I said I haven't used Luxon so um, we'll take a look at it um, the the one that um, that I tend to hear used a lot is date FNS, right? Um, and um, so I'm curious just to see, you know, what the differences are. Uh, I have used date FNS, date functions. Um, um, you might not need, ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, DayJS is another one, right? Um, so you might not need a date library at all. Um, you know what? We, we may not need a date library, but we can think about that, right? Um, so formats, we can provide, you know, internationalized formatting. Um, so tree shaking, real world example. So Luxon still is 20 KB after tree shaking. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll take a look. Um, we'll, we'll try out Luxon. Um, but the the nice thing about what we what we're doing um, is this decision no longer becomes a big decision. Um, so we can talk about that. One thing. Um, anyway, let's go. Let's go back to our drawing, right? Uh, so. When we look, my daughter's coming to close the door. When we when we look at this, right, um, and we've got this new library, right. Um, so, in in the context of what we're doing, um, we're going to call this one moment. Um, right, and and moment again is in like you know 400 components right these each represent 100 components now we're moving over to um to luxon right so we'll go ahead and um luxon and put that in there and let's go ahead and I believe there's a way to lock this. Yes, there is. Oh, come on. Not a way to group. Um, well, that's cool. You can get AI to generate a diagram. Oh, that's really cool. Mermaid to Excaladraw. There's some cool stuff in here with the AI. Um, I thought there would be a way to group, and maybe I. Um, usually in tools it's G, but G. Oh wow. G 
Gia's background. Anyway, it's unimportant. Um, so, you know, what do we do in this case, right? Where where moment is everywhere. Well, typically what will happen is you'll start doing like partial replacements, um, right? Because you could search and replace every every piece of moment in your code, but some pieces might require more changes depending on the library. So sometimes you'll wind up with, you know, these hundred are half moment, half Luxon. Um, these um, are all moment, right? Maybe these 100 components were easy to change, so you were able to get rid of moment um, and, you know, completely replace it. But again, right? Let's say a fourth library comes along or a third library comes along, right? Let's say that for whatever reason, you don't like um, date FNS or you don't like Luxon. So now you want to go to date FNS, right? Or we'll, we'll go to date JS, right? Um, now we'll do date FNS, right? Um, so now you want to move to date FNS, right? Um, and, you know, maybe this fourth set of 100 components is under active development. So now you start adding in date FNS, right? And now we're, we're kind of in a messy place um, where we've got three different libraries that are pushed everywhere. Um, and it becomes ugly. Like really, really, really ugly. Um, and, you know, you kind of just throw up your hands um, because people are complaining, well, in some places I have to know how to use moment and other places I have to know how to use Luxon. And now we've got places where we're using date FNS and I'm just confused about everything. And so a lot of times you'll wind up with people rebelling, right? And maybe the people that are using this library, um, they decide that they're just going to do Luxon everywhere. And so they throw it in here, right? Um, and it just gets ugly. But what do we do? Right? Um, and this is the notion of a facade. Um, let's go ahead and add our facade in here. Um, Rotate it, make it a bit larger. So what you do with your facade is you basically create a layer that sits in between um, you and your components, right? Um, so here we go. So now we've got this layer that sits between us and our components. And, you know, now we can use our facade um, to now these components, right? Now all 400 components depend on our facade. Um, what is a facade? A facade is just a uniform way for you to communicate um, with, with your components or whatever in your code, right? It's, it's a uniform thing that you can provide to your users, um, to consumers of it, and they get the same thing everywhere, right? How is this better? Well, in our example, um, let's say that our, um, and, and the way a facade works is a facade is basically just an interface that you pass along, um, but the facade winds up being, it has to have a concrete class, right? Interfaces need something concrete. Um, a lot of times the, the facade in the implementation can be concrete, um, the same thing. Um, and that may be what we do today. 
Um, maybe not. Um, no, we, we'll, we'll separate it, right? So this is our interface here. Um, and this is the concrete implementation. Um, so let's see. I think there are ways to get better colors. Um, or more colors, right? Because we're running out of colors, but we, we can use blue here, right? No, we were using blue for date FNS. Um, so red, green, blue. Um, let's do... So red and blue, if we do like, um, I don't know, 990, 99, um, that's a, should be, that's, let's, let's mix in a little bit less. Um, it's hoping to get a better shade of purple, um, but, because this is pretty close to this. Um, you know what, we don't have a yellow anywhere. Let's grab this. Can I grab that yellow? Um, nope. That color dropper is not gonna work. Um, I don't remember how to use, oh, there's my grouping right there. No, let's duplicate. Bring forward, bring to front, and backwards. And back. Um, so we've got layers. Interesting. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter, right? Um, so this is our concrete implementation. Within our concrete implementation, let's let's say that we started with moment, right? Um, and um, you know we've got a couple of different methods that use moment in here. Um, but again, right, we're, we're wrapping this concrete implementation with moment using a facade. Um, and, you know, we, we suddenly need to move to Luxon, right? Um, and so one thing we could do, absolutely do, is just you know, begin replacing. Um, we can begin replacing pieces within our application with Luxon, right? And so over time, this concrete library slowly becomes entirely Luxon. Um, but notice what we haven't changed. We haven't had to change our 400 components at all um, because our facade is between us and the the rest of the code and our facade guarantees the api right um so this is very much like um, the public api of your date handling um and you know eventually um we, we decide you know we don't like luxon we're gonna go um you know day js maybe right um so, you know, we, we start introducing new DayJS stuff. Um, and, you know, over time, we, we slowly replace everything with DayJS, right? Um, and our users don't care, right? The only thing that changes is our concrete implementation. Um, the other nice thing about this facade is that a lot of times mocking dates, um, Hey, Hotshot Kanishka, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you for, you know, joining and, and mentioning stuff. And um, yeah, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep streaming. Well, I stream Angular, but I like to talk about, um, I, I love talking about Angular. I love talking about um, NX. What I really like is um, I use Angular every day. Um, 
And, um, you know, it, it's an amazing framework. I love it to death. But it makes an easy vehicle for me to um, help talk about, like, deeper concepts, right? Um, I, I want to help people become better in their career, right? Reach whatever their goals are. Um, and so, um, you know, some of this stuff, you may not encounter um, in your day-to-day -day unless you have like good mentors or you're really driven on your own. Um, so I want to be able to share with you, you know, how do we, how do we achieve, um, how do we level up, right? Um, and one of the things that will help is understanding concepts like this. Um, I am using this particular concept that we're discussing right now as we design, um, a new project at Bill. Um, the point of the new project is to be completely modular, um, and we want to be able to replace any part at any time, right? Well, well, how do you do that? Um, you know, it by by implementing patterns like this, and there there are other ways to accomplish what we're doing, right? There, um, I so. Um, like this book right here, Design Patterns, is one of my absolute favorite books. Um, I read this book, oh, the first time a long time ago. I don't even remember how long ago I read this book for the first time. Um, it opened up my mind to the concept that maybe the way I'm designing software wasn't the best. Um, and I'm not saying that you need to implement design patterns. Um, I'm not saying that design patterns are the best way to go. Um, but I, I will say that if you understand design patterns, um, they give us a common language, right? So if, if I talk to somebody who understands design patterns and I say, hey, we're using a, a, a facade, they're like, oh, yeah, I get that, right? Um, so um, books like that, that are more about the theoretical side are um, the books that are going to take you from junior and mid into senior. Um, and then once you're in senior level, what you want to start looking into is definitely more theory. Um, but now you start needing to look into leadership type stuff, right? Um, and, and once you've got leadership and communication, then you start moving into staff level and things like that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a journey and everybody's at different places in their journey. Um, so, you know, don't feel like you have to know all of this stuff. Um, take a look at where you are right now. Um, and, and, you know, what do I need to do to take that next step? Right. Um, for some people, it's going to be I need to learn Angular better. And that's totally great. Right. For others, it's like, well, I understand software languages. To me, most languages are just, um, are basically the same. Um, usually it's just syntax that you need to learn, right? Now you're ready to move into more theory or stuff like that, um, right? So if you find yourself saying that and you're wondering why you're stuck in like junior or mid, um, maybe it's time to start looking into theory and understanding how to architect your software differently. Um, so. Um, you know, that, that's the point of these kinds of discussions, right? Um, because you're going to get good at the language that you use just by using it daily, right? Um, you're going to get good at JavaScript. You're going to get good at TypeScript. You may not be expert level, but, um, you know, there, there are parts of TypeScript and um, Angular that I can go into very, very deep. Um, and there are other parts that my, my knowledge is very, very shallow, right? Um, and that's just because of my experience and what I've been exposed to and what I've, what I've studied. Um, what really separates you as you start to get um, more and more experience is can you design software that's reusable, um, that's easy to maintain, and things like that. But yeah. Amazing design concepts are very important. I agree with you. Who's the author of the book? So that book here. Let's let's do this. And I want to go over here before I grab the link. 
Um, we're going to go grab the link to the book on Amazon so you guys can find it other places. Um, okay, I'm not signed in. Um, I don't want to... I don't want to accidentally dox my wife, right? Um, she didn't agree to this. So um, so the book is called Gang of Four, um, Design Patterns. Um, and if you just, GOF is often the way it's, um, it's abbreviated for the Gang of Four. Um, and here's the book right here. Um, this is the hardcover edition that I've got. I definitely did not pay this much for it. Things are way more expensive now. Um, but the nice thing about it is design patterns are becoming much, they're, they're everywhere, right? Um, so here's a link to the book that I'm, and it was written in 1994. Um, so to give you an idea, I was still in high school in 1994. Um, it was my senior year, but still in high school when this book was written. Um, so it, it's a classic. Um, and, you know, some people disagree with it. Some people agree with it. Um, but let me, let me give you guys this link. Um, I'll put this in chat for everybody. Um, Oh, wow, that is quite the link. Uh, wow. Um, interesting. Oh, YouTube doesn't like it because it's too big. Um, so that's interesting that Twitch let me do that, but YouTube doesn't. Um, but that, that's the book on Amazon. Um, there are other places, um, like if you just search for design patterns on, um, you know, on Google, you're gonna come up with stuff. I like refactoring.guru, great site. Um, and they, they discuss different patterns. So over here, um, you know, they'll go into patterns and stuff. and the thing about design patterns is I'm not saying um, you need to start implementing design patterns. And one of the biggest things that um, as people encounter design patterns, they'll start trying to implement them everywhere and that's good. Um, but you'll run into software every once in a while where it looks like somebody went through the book or a website on design patterns and tried to implement every design pattern because they decided that design patterns are great. That's not what I suggest. And let me, let me share this site um, with you guys, because it, it's one that I commonly send people to when we're talking about patterns. Um, one of my favorites. Um, but the, the point of design patterns is they give us a common language, right? Um, so this drawing of a facade, now when we talk about facades, um, and you guys can visualize this drawing in your head, right? Now you understand when somebody's talking about a facade, we've got a common language that we're talking about. And we're like, oh yeah, you're trying to put something over the top of something else so that you know, this side of the software sees the outside of the facade um, and this side of the software can change at will, right? Um, and that's the whole point. Um, and if we look, um, we can see here that there are, there's the facade pattern right here, right? Under structural patterns. Um, so you can go read about it. Bridge patterns, another way to bridge between something else and, you know, something internally, um, you know, adapters another way. So these, these three tend to be similar. Decorators are ways to take something and make it um, enhance it quite often, right? Fly weights are a way to reuse objects. Um, proxies another way, you know, with like facade and stuff like that. Um, 
to isolate yourself from changes. Um, so these structural patterns are really, really helpful. Um, you know, and you know, you've got creational patterns. Um, and you know, Java went super heavy on abstract factories. Um, <laughs> and that's why their jokes about, you know, when, when you when you read about Java, their jokes about um, a meta factory that produces factories that produce factories, right? Things like that. Um, builder patterns really, really cool, one of my favorites, but you know, these these give us um, these design patterns, the reason I like design patterns is the common language. Um, if you've studied them and if you understand them, then we can have a discussion about what I'm thinking about, right? When we're having our architectural discussions. Um, and you understand what I'm talking about, even if the implementations between what I'm talking about and what you're talking about are going to be different, right? Um, in the end, it's going to accomplish the same thing. Um, if we, if in our discussion about software, you know, we decide, hey, we're going to do a facade, um, it doesn't matter to me how you implement it because I know that, you know, the consumers of that facade are going to keep the same API. And that's the important part about a facade. Um, very much like the API to your application, um, the facade becomes an internal contract to all the consumers. Um, and so you're saying that this is, this is how you, in our case, we're gonna use a facade for dates. Um, so this is how you will format a date. Um, and it doesn't, we don't care about the implementations, right? Um, so everybody will use that method to format a date and it's going to stay that way forever. Um, and that brings us to the next part of the discussion, right? Leaking implementation, right? Um, so if we go back and, um, We, we talk about, um, you know, let's, let's say we go back and our implementation is using date FNS, right? And let's say inside of here, um, we've, we've provided a method um, and we'll call it format, right? Um, and inside of here, we're using, um, and, and this is a very American specific date, right? Um, so maybe um, instead of doing that, we can do, you know, this. Um, um, right. Um, so this is the this is the contract that we created with our format function, right? Um, and this is very moment JS, right? Well, let's say that we decide. Um, you know what? We need to replace moment. Um, so we go out and we replace it with um, Luxon, right? And let's say that Luxon, um, and we're going to mark this in red because it's very moment related, right? Um, and we're going to, you know, copy and paste it in a few places. Um, let's say that Luxon. Um, uses m like lowercase m for minutes um instead of month right and i don't i don't even know um if i don't remember moment if lowercase m is minutes or uppercase m is you know months or what um but let's say that moment uses lowercase m luxon uses uppercase m right um and so now we've got moment-based formatting out here. Um, and now we're using Luxon inside, right? Well, we just said this is our public API. Um, so if we change this formatting, then now we've got to go change everything again and the point of our facade is broken right so what do we do 
Well, one thing we could do is put another facade in here, right? So now our facade relies on a facade. That, and then, you know, if we change libraries, we could put another facade. But these wind up being translation layers, right? Um, where we translate from one to the other internally and blah, 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 right? Not a good solution. Um, it, it becomes ugly. Uh, because externally, our API provides date formatting in the format of um, moment, right? Internally, we could be using, um, we could be using like, I don't know, you know, Luxon date FNS, date, date fun, or day JS, whatever it is, right? Uh, we could just be using international. Um, or in the future, um, and, and we can look at this on, we go back to the moment, um, JS, there's this temporal, um, so Luxon, day JS, date FNS, oh, JS, Joda, I haven't, and then here they talk about other interesting things yeah temporal temporal's been in um tc39 stage three of tc39 for probably five years um yes we are going to create this design today in the app to demo what we're talking about right now we're discussing the theory we are going to implement this today but i, I want to make sure that we understand the theory um, before we dive into it, right? Temporal is what I really wish we could get to. Temporal is going to solve a bunch of issues with um, that, that we use to date libraries for. Um, so with temporal, we can do, you know, plain date ISO, right? Um, and temporal also removes the... the need for time zones like a lot of the issues that people have around um javascript is time zones and we run into this all the time right um and it, it shows up in weird places um so say for example um a user selects like um you know we're, we're coming up on the, the the famous ides of march from you know shakespeare right um the julius caesar play um ides of march march 15th right um let's say a user in india selects march 15th right we store that in the database perfect right now a user in the u.s say the west coast of the U.S., right? As far away in the U.S. as we can get from India time zone-wise um, and distance-wise, I guess. I don't know. Um, I guess it depends on which direction you fly or what. I, I, I don't know. But time zone-wise, the west coast of the U.S. is as far away from India as we can get, right? Um, the user on the west coast of U.S. starts getting March 14th, right? Pi Day in their... Um, in their browser when they when they view the date that was selected in india um and then you know we go forward and we jump to somebody on like the east coast of australia and maybe they're getting march 16th right so now we've got three different dates but really all we want to show is march 15th because that's all we care about um there are arguments that you know the West Coast should probably see March 14th. The East, you know, the East Coast of Australia should probably see, um, you know, should probably see March 16th, um, especially if it's like meetings or things like that, right? Like if you're doing a meetup website and, you know, date and time matter, then absolutely the time zone matters. Um, but say, say you're somebody like, um, like a game publisher, right? Um, and you've decided worldwide you're going to release on March 15th across the globe, right? So everybody gets it on March 15th. Um, well, you don't want the East Coast of Australia seeing March 16th. You don't want India seeing March 
um, 15th and you don't want the US seeing March 14th, right? Um, that, that makes a mess. Um, temporal date allows you to use just plain dates, right? Which is awesome. Or just plain times um, and things like that. So it's going to solve a lot of these issues that we use date time um, libraries for. Um, but like I said, it's been, who knows how, how long it's been in TC39, I can't remember. Um, but that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, we're going to use Luxon though, and, and it's good to dive in, right? But this is, this is the last point I wanna make before we dive into the code. This represents your public API, the facade. Much like the API that you give to customers outside, um, you need to maintain this API for the integrity of your app. If you don't, you know, then the point of your facade is broken because anytime you change something behind, because you're leaking details of what you've built the facade over, right? In the, you know, in the form of this format string, right? It seems harmless, right? I just put a wrapper around the format. It seems really harmless. Um, but you're leaking the format from your concrete class through your facade. Um, and this, this is known, this ANDA pattern is known as a, a leaky abstraction, right? Um, is a date without a time zone? Um, there can be dates without time zones, right? Like my birthday, March 8th, doesn't have a time zone, right? Anywhere in the world, March 8th, you guys can wish me a happy birthday. Um, and... I'm perfectly fine with it. I don't care if it's March 7th or March 9th where I am when you're wishing me that happy birthday. Doesn't matter, right? And it, it's, um, it, right, that date doesn't have a time zone. Um, um, one minute before you started, the dogs needed a walk, but I find, hey, welcome. I'm, I'm happy to have you here, TVD Gamer. Um, and honestly, the dogs are important. You should definitely walk them. So it's a date without a time zone. Yep. You, you can have dates without time zones. Um, and they're important, right? Like Steam does it all the time. Worldwide release date, uh, you know, March 30th, for whatever reason, right? Um, yeah, you don't need moment, absolutely. Um, and that's what we're talking about, um, is you don't need it. And that's the point of these facades, right? Eventually, I want to get to temporal and just use temporal everywhere. Um, but... Even then, putting a, a facade over temporal allows me to potentially bring in a library to help out where temporal may fail, right? Um, and so this is, the, this is the point of the discussion, right? And you should be, when, when you bring in a library, um, think about, do we need to put a facade on this? Will we ever need to replace it? Um, and like I said, the current project I'm working on, we're using facades heavily because any piece can be replaced at any time, right? That, that's a requirement of the software we're building um, because we don't want to make long reaching decisions um, because we're in the early design phase. Um, and so we can achieve that using a facade for a lot of things. Other things, we might use bridges, we might use proxies, who knows, right? Um, but again, don't leak these implementation details, right? The format string um, is a leaky abstraction, right? So let, let's talk about how we get away from that. Um, yeah, um, there is a function on, on the date object, and, and the international object has definitely made this better. Um, and you know, a lot of the reason why we use libraries goes back to the way dates behaved, you know, back in 2011 when Moment was created, right? Um, JavaScript has gotten much better in its handling of a lot of things and the date has improved. So you're absolutely correct, Sir Machado. Um, you don't necessarily need Moment. Um, the reason that um, we're going to use, um, we're going to use 
Luxon today is to illustrate the point of the facade and to show how we can change it. Um, but you're absolutely right. That's another discussion um, to have when you're when you're picking libraries. Um, is do we really need the library? Um, and you know we're, we're having that discussion too, um, especially because um, because of the nature of the project we're working on. Um, design systems, so things like material, um, um, tailwind, things like that. Um, they have a big impact on what we're trying to deliver. So we've decided we're going pure CSS. Um, and the reason for that is we don't want to um, create extra dependencies by adding our stuff, right? Um, so, you know, there, there are good discussions to have around that, right? Um, because the existence of moment, the existence of these libraries means that you don't need those libraries because you could write the code, right? Um, this is where you get into trade-offs in software. Um, you could use somebody else's library um, and be, you know, be at their mercy and the size of their packages and how they bundle and their bugs and all of that stuff. Or you could write it yourself, right? And now you're at the mercy of yourself and all of that stuff, right? And all the bugs and if users hate it and blah, blah, right? Now you're maintaining that library. Um, so there's, there's always trade-offs, right? Um, going, you know, design systems versus pure CSS. Well, now if we need dialogues, we've got to create, um, you know, popovers and stuff like that. We've got to create that ourselves. We've got to make it work in a way that doesn't surprise the users. We've got to figure out all the, um, you know, we've got to figure out all the little interactions that people expect. Um, we've also got to figure out things like internationalization. We've got to figure out things like um, accessibility and all of that stuff that other libraries tend to give to you out of the box, right? Um, so there's always those trade-offs, right? But the fact that something exists absolutely means that you could go create it, right? Um, depending on your skill level, right? Um, you know, the fact that a car, car exists, does that mean that I could go create a car? Maybe, who knows? Um, should I go create a car? Probably not. Any car I create is probably not going to be safe as any car that you would buy, right? Even the worst car is probably going to be better than the best I could do. Um, and so again, those are the trade-offs, right? Just because something exists and you could potentially do it doesn't mean you should, right? Um, and I'm constantly reminded of this when I, when I take on projects at home, um, you know, um, Sometimes professionals, well, not sometimes, professionals do this way more than, than I do. Um, and if it's something outside of what I do professionally, um, they're going to be better than me and have tricks and, you know, produce better quality than me. Um, in general, I'm not going to say all the time, right? In general, that's the way it is. Um, so, you know, somebody who works with dates probably understands dates better than I do. Um, and there are whole websites on um, just how crazy dates can get, right? Um, so um, that's another important thing to consider. Um, TBD Gamer, going pure CSS, that, makes, that takes some commitment these days, a lot of work. Yeah, dates are still a PII. <laughs> yep, exactly. They're my child. Um, dates are always, always, always difficult, right? Um, especially once you start getting into things like we just started out talking about early in the stream, um, daylight savings, right? Um, even in the time zone that I'm in, Arizona doesn't do daylight savings. Utah almost did away with daylight savings. I wish they did. Um, and, you know, there, there are other states in the U.S. Indiana doesn't do daylight savings. Um, I think Alaska does it. Um, there, there are a bunch of other states that don't do daylight savings. So even within just the U.S. in the same time zone, you're not guaranteed to have daylight savings, right? Um, and 
which messes with things. And then you start throwing in leap years and then leap seconds, right? Um, because the a year is actually slightly longer than 365 days, right? We get leap years, but then days are slightly different than the actual 24 hours that we use. So we get leap seconds. Um, and then there's weird stuff like um, a strong enough earthquake can affect the rotation of the earth. Um, which changes the length of a day. Um, so there's all sorts of weird stuff that you don't even think about um, with dates and times and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, it's just better to let somebody who understands it deal with it. Um, and that, that's why I like date libraries, right? They, they've got a lot of this stuff figured out. Um, and the really good ones have all of it figured out. Um, but everybody still makes mistakes. Um, and Tomorrow, you're going to see a lot of software that doesn't have time zones figured out breaky. Um, or even today, like today at 2 a.m., there were probably devs all over the world. 2 a.m. Um, 2 a.m. in the time zones, right? Each time zone that does daylight savings does the change at 2 a.m. So um, at, at 2 a.m., um, in the mountain time zone that I'm in, um, the clocks jumped immediately to 3 a.m. So that whole hour is just gone. That creates a mess for software that um, that relies on that. And you know there are a lot of um, cron jobs, you know, automatic jobs that are set up on the server that typically run sometime between 2 and 3 a.m. in a time zone. Well, if you skip from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m you get a problem, right? Um, so there, there were probably a lot of devs that were called in the middle of the night last night, our site's broken. You need to fix it before customers wake up, right? Um, so dates are difficult. Um, but anyway, enough theory. Let's, let's dive into some code. Um, and let's, let's see how we would do this, right? So to figure it out, this is what we want to do. We want to format this date here. And we don't care about the time. Nobody cares about what time I published the blog or I wrote it or anything like that, right? Um, we, we just care about the date. We're going to use Luxon, um, mainly because I've never used it, but it's going to provide a good example of um, what we can do to wrap a library um, and you know create a facade around it that we can use internally. Um, and then, you know, Potentially, we, what we can do is uh, we're going to stick with Luxon um, going forward, but we, we can show how using this facade um, can help us in the future, right? We'll, we'll swap to just plain um, international date formatting for a second, and then we'll go back to Luxon, right? Um, so let's get started. Um, where do we start? Um, how should we start, right? In Angular, how should we structure this? Um, we're, we're, using, um, we're using analog, which introduces some new stuff to it, right? Um, analog has a data access. It's got a services layer. Um, my suggestion is we want to add um, a library. Um, and this library will be... Um, one of the things uh, that I'm very, um, we can say keen on right now, is making my libraries more DDD focused. Um, and I recently read um, an interview from the, from the creator of DDD um, where they asked him, you know, what was your biggest... Um, what what do you what is your biggest regret with DDD? Um, and he came out and he said the important stuff about DDD is at the end of the book, um, and everybody should have been exposed to that early because people who implement DDD and DDD is domain driven design, um, but people who implement domain driven design quite often focus too much on the early parts of the book because that seems the most important to them because that's what they encounter first. 
and forget about the end of the book that talks about, um, you know, the pieces that um, he found were important. Um, one of the things about DDD is uh, when fully implemented, it's a lot of ceremony and it's way too much probably for a front end. Um, you may have use cases for it. I don't know. Um, when I say I like DDD, I like the idea of bounding contexts um, around my libraries. Um, so that's where we'll start. We'll start with, um, um, and it's, um, we'll start with what's the context of this library. Um, I'm going to say that this library is focused purely on dates. Um, and so that's, that's our context, right? So this library is only going to contain things related to dates. Um, and that keeps it narrow. Um, it also allows us to focus on, um, it makes it easier for us to decide where things go, right? Um, if, if I were to throw it in a big giant shared library, um, then when somebody wants to add something, and they, they encounter the shared library, they go, oh, shared. Yeah, it could go in shared, right? Um, and then they're like, yeah, we'll just throw it in shared. And then suddenly shared holds everything, right? Because when, when people go look, they're like, oh yeah, it could go in shared. Oh yeah, totally shared, right? And shared kind of becomes like the kitchen sink where um, everybody just kind of throws their dirty dishes in there and they just sit and you know maybe some of them have water in them and they begin to stink and right if if you've had messy roommates you know what i'm talking about right we don't want that kitchen sink right uh, so we don't want to start out encouraging that by adding shared right away um and i fork the repo absolutely please fork the repo hey marcus welcome to the stream man um it, it's good to see you do you guys do um do you guys do daylight savings in um well I don't I don't wanna do you guys do daylight savings, Marcus? Curious about that. Um so um it's uh yeah, okay. So you do. So you're you're feeling the you're feeling the tiredness and the pain of everybody today. Um, um but anyway. We don't want that kitchen sink. So let's let's go ahead and create our library, right? So we'll go up here. Um, we're going to use NX to generate our library. I love the GUI interface for NX. Um, so we're just going to come in here. We're going to type library. Um, and we're going to select an Angular library. Um, so now we need to name it. Um, so the name of our library, we're just going to call this our dates library. I don't want to call it date um, because we don't want it to um, interfere with anything else. Um, and we can see that it's going to stick this in the dates source lib. Um, so under here, we're going to get um, the date source. I created this as a non mono repo. Um, Do we want to convert this to a mono repo? Um, because this kind of winds up being crazy, right? Because now we've got dates, source, lib, dates, dates, right? Um, this isn't a good way to do it. What would be nice is if we could do, do date or lib, dates, source, and then dates, right? Um, we can do that with NX. Um, and maybe we'll start there. Um, like, because th this was something that I just learned. Um, so let's let's go ahead and break out of this. Um, and the other thing I want to do is I'm going to close down, um, you know, whatever code editor I'm using at the time, because we're going to make a bit of a change. Um, and let's go to nx.dev. And inside of here, there's a convert to mono repo um, that I just learned about. Um, and I'm really debating running this at work because the library was generated a specific way. Um, but this convert to mono repo um, will turn 
a library specific repo into an actual mono repo. Um, and so there are no options on it. It's just going to do it. Let's, let's go see what it does, right? Um, so we're going to do PNPM NX generate um, convert to mono repo. We're going to throw the dry run flag on this. Uh, whenever you're running um, NX from the command line, um, make sure, oh, and I need the at NX workspace colon. Um, make sure, well, actually, at any time you're using, um, any time you're using any of these generators, throw a dry run flag on there. Um, because what that will do, cannot read, reading project type. Well, let's follow their verbose and see what we're missing. Um, So convert to mono repo. So there it is. Oh. This one says we can just do at NX. Workspace mono repo. Cannot find generator mono repo. Um, convert to mono repo. And here, let's just throw the help flag on it um, and see. It doesn't have any more. I'm not sure. Let's let's just see what happens if I throw um, Angular dash blog on here. Um, reading project type. That that's not the case. Um, I wonder. Because this is um, an analog, um, oh, I, I threw help on there. That's not what I want for both. There, there might be, it might be trying to read a project type, um, trying to determine, is this an Angular project? Is this a React project? Um, so there, there might be a bug in here, um, which is unfortunate, but that's OK. Um, so I'll figure this out later. Um, I don't want to spend too much time here. Let's go ahead and launch everything again. Um, so unfortunately that one doesn't work. I haven't tried it at work either. So I'm not sure, um, if it's specific to the project that we're working on now or what's going on. Um, pain is the word. Yeah. Um, oh, hey, we got somebody on YouTube. Um, so I, I see Jari so, uh, watching from Bangladesh. I don't know what is going, what the hell this is, but I am here just to support. Hey, thank you so much. Um, we're, we're building Angular um, we're in analog, um, and we're, we're discussing um, we're discussing what do we want to call it? Like facades, right? Patterns. Um, so thank you for joining from YouTube. Um, and, and thank you for, for, for the comment. Um, anyway, we're up and we're serving. Um, we're going to go ahead and just generate this, right? Um, and unfortunately, we're 
we're going to be stuck with the weird directory name because of the, you know, a choice I made early on. Um, so this is our dates um, library. Um, if you mark it buildable, it's um, it's similar to like async and await. Once you mark one thing as buildable, then everything starts having to be buildable. Um, so be be careful about that. Um, I'm curious if I just tell it, I want it in libs slash dates, what happens? Um, yeah, what if I just do libs? Hey, I mean, we've got this extra lib. But I can live with that. Um, so one way around it is to, you know, say, hey, I want my library to live in the libs area of my project. Um, and because I chose to go off of the root, um, it's going to add that. Um, we aren't going to be doing any routing, so we don't care about lazy. We don't have a parent. Publishable is a way to be able to publish your libraries to like NPM. Um, we're not going to be doing that, so um, and we can add this later if we want. And routing, we don't need. Um, there's going to be more options here, right? Like uh, we don't we don't have a module, so we don't need a module test file. Um, we aren't going to be using Tailwind, but you can easily configure your stuff for Tailwind here. Um, this library is going to be specific for just dates. Um, if we were going to add like a date picker to it, then maybe um, change detection doesn't really matter because we aren't going to be using components. Um, display block doesn't matter. A lot of this stuff isn't going to matter because we're really just going to be using, um, we're, we're going to be providing some libraries, the facade and everything around that, right? Um, this is the piece that allows us to do the libs. If we change this from as provided to derived, um, it might work the same, yeah, because we're going off the root. Um, but this as provided versus derived um, makes a bigger difference when, say, you, you right-clicked and generated off of pages or something like that. We don't need a selector. Um, standalone's fine. Strict, of course. Um, CSS, I believe we're doing... Your CSS in here, um, but that doesn't matter either. Um, and then tags. Tags is um, an important part of um, of NX. Um, and this this is something that I've skipped over a lot on stream. But what I would do um, is I would give this a type library tag and a scope internal. Um, and what these two tags mean to me is that this library should only be used internally, um, and then it's a library, meaning that we shouldn't import applications into it. Um, we're gonna use Jest, view encapsulation, doesn't matter, um, but just, I, I leave that alone. Um, and then the standalone config, um, leave that turned on. So we'll see that it's going to generate this in the, um, Mm. So this is going to Yeah, there's a problem here. And this is why it's good to look at what it's going to generate. It's going to create this in the libs directory, meaning that every lib is going to get the same thing. That's not what we want. Um, so we'll go up here and we'll go libs dates. Um, and so now this library will be within the dates. I mean, it's libs dates, source lib dates. Um, we could probably cut and paste this down to the, um, the source file. So then it becomes libstate source. Um, 
But if you do that, then you wind up with other weird things when you generate. Um, I don't know. We'll leave it as is. We're actually going to take out the dates here, um, and we're just going to leave it in the lib um, because we're just going to have um, the, the the facade and then the actual concrete implementation. Um, so let's go see how we would implement that. Um, all right. So we're going to generate this. That's going to generate our library. Um, and now we've got our library. Um, that's interesting. I'm curious why it did that anyway. So now within our code, we can see we've got a libs directory. Within our libs, we've got a source directory. Inside of here, this is all set up. Um, our source has an index.ts. We're going to pull this out. We're going to leave the um, index.ts here because we want it. Um, we're going to use it to export our public API. Um, but inside of here, we're just going to get rid of all of this. We don't want it. Um, and instead, we're going to add a new file. Um, and this file is um, what well, we can call this our dates.ts, um, right? Um, and this will be our interface. So here, um, we can just go export star from dot slash. Um, lib and then dates and that's what we want um it's it's telling us that it it's not a module and that's fine it will be a module as soon as we add the export um type and um so this is where we need to um, we need to decide on a name. For right now, I'm going to call it um, uh, we'll, we'll call it dates lib for now. That's a horrible name. Um, um, and the reason that dates lib is a horrible name is you don't it doesn't tell you a lot about it, right? Um, so, you know, we could call this like our date time helper and helper often has other connotations to it. We'll come up with a better name. Um, but anyways, we need um, a couple of, a couple of things. And, and really it's got, it's got what we, what we want already. Um, right. It's got formatted date formatted time, and really we only need the formatted date. Um, the rest of it we don't really care about. Um, so right now that's our interface. Um, and that's really all we care about. Um, and now we can, now we can inject this. Um, you know, if you come from certain um, other languages, they, they, they'll sometimes use this Hungarian notation and add an I to tell you that this is an interface. Um, I don't typically do that, but you, you can absolutely do that. Um, but this is now um, our, our helper, right? Um, and so we, we need a couple of other things, right? Um, so one thing um, we want to do is let's let's get um, um, and let, let's rename this to be um, date time helper. Um, so there we go. So 
One other thing we want to do is we want another new file. Um, and um, this is our this is our concrete. Um, so yeah, TBD Gamer is a C sharp, and so I've done web for like my whole career, um, but I spent a good deal of time writing um, .NET and, and C sharp, um, particularly. Um, so I had that tendency for a long time but I don't use it in TypeScript. Yeah, um, it just feels weird in TypeScript. There are some projects that follow that on Angular as well. And yeah, Sir Machado, you're absolutely correct. Um, and there are other things that happen. Um, so like at, at Bill, we, our, our backend is Java. Um, and so when Java devs come in and write um, front end stuff in TypeScript, um, you start seeing public on all of the public methods, private on all the private, right? That's that's the Java thing, right? You mark everything as public and private and all of that stuff, right? Um, you don't have to do that in, in TypeScript, and it actually it gets on my nerves a little bit sometimes. Um, um, why doesn't it think that that... You know, oh, now it does. Okay. So we've added the date time helper. This is really all we want to expose. Um, is anything in this file. So we need a concrete implementation. So we're going to get a new file. Um, and for right now, um, we'll, we'll call this the, we'll call this the Luxon helper.ts. Um, and so this is going to be our, our helper that we um, implement here. Um, and to do that, we're going to need to add Luxon. So let's go ahead and add Luxon. Um, so inside of here, we can just do pnpm i. Um, and let me go to the Luxon home space and um, demo quick tour, the install guide. So it looks like you can just add through the Luxon Global. Um, so it looks like we can just do this. Um, so actually, I don't even want that. I just want that. Um, I think the dash dash save isn't required. Um, dash dash save. There are third party typing files for flow. Okay, so we, we also need to add the at types slash luxon. So we'll do that. Um, so here um, we can just paste what we copied. Um, so there's our install save Luxon. Um, now we've added Luxon. I should have just added that to the end, to be honest. Um, so we can also grab this and add our types to it. Um, and I've I've never used Luxon before, so this will be another um, another learning experience for me. Um, so there we go. We've, we've now got Luxon installed. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that we commit that. Um, so what happened here? Oh, they just added this stuff for the other. Okay. So in our package.json, we added Luxon. Um, it added the ESLint. I wonder why I didn't have that before. Um, now it's there. So um, we'll go ahead and add that um, added Luxon. Um, and we'll push that live. 
Um, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to stage this saying that we added the dates library, right? Added dates library. Um, and so now we're in a good place um, to continue. So now we've got our Luxon helper. We've got our date time helper. How do we, how do we provide this, right? Uh, well, first thing in the, in the Luxon helper, um, we, we need to provide um, a helper object, right? Um, and we can do this a couple of different ways. Um, you know, there's, there's the object-oriented way where we can say, hey, export, um, you know, Luxon helper implements date time helper, right? Um, so this is the object-oriented way. Um, and I left the class off, right? Um, so there we go. And now it's telling me, yeah, we don't implement date time helper, right? We can um, we can now say, hey, Luxon helper doesn't implement that. Um, so there we go, right? And so now, you know, we've got stuff here that works. Um, why doesn't it like my import? Oh, yep. That is absolutely true. Um, and that's that's NX helping us out, right? Um, if oh, and this is date time helper, right? So this is the object oriented way. Um, the other way we could do it is um, well, we we probably want to use the object-oriented way, um, but we, we could expose it in a functional way. Um, but the reason we probably want to do it this way is we want to make this injectable. Um, and we'll need to import that from Angular Core. So now it's injectable, and now you know we can modify this to say, hey, um, This will return a string, boom, and there we go. Um, so now we're not returning a string, right? Um, and it's complaining about an empty method, right? Um, so th the next thing we can do is we can just, you know, grab import um, Luxon from Luxon. Um, and inside of here, now we can just return luxon dot um, format. Um, and then date, year, year, right. And so now we've got a we've got a bit of an issue. We don't need that semicolon because now all of our dates are just going to be formatted the same way. Um, and so then, you know, we might be tempted to say, you know what, um, we're just going to throw format equals um, year, year, right, dash, month, month, dash, day, day, right? And here we're just going to use format. Um, and so now if they call it, it's just going to be the same, right? Because um, it'll get a default value. But Right. If we if we go back to our drawing, um, and we look, I've just I've just created a leak, right? Um, so um, let's see. In Angular, I kind of feel that interfaces are used as shape of data more often than an abstraction inheritance feature. So I don't see the benefit. I mark all in TypeScript. Types and scores, or return types, everything scopes. Yep. Um, and it doesn't like this. Why doesn't it like this? It has no exported member Luxon. Oh, 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 oh. That's why it's date time.
So we import date time and we use date time here. Um, and now the format. Um, From interesting. I need to figure out how to use Luxon to format a date. Um, so let's look at a quick tour. Um So we create our first date time uh, to string. So it's just a to string. To locale string. And then we can use different date times. Interesting. Um, to an ISO string. Um, so it's immutable, it uses international. So the format, month long day, numeric. Oh, that's cool. Time zone support, duration. Um, That that's one of the things that I want to look at here. Um, so I want to see these are milliseconds, seconds. Um, I'm look I'm looking for like a few days ago, or a week ago, or two hours ago. Um, so validity, drinks for Cthulhu, that's hilarious. Um, So let's see. You've got these built in strings, and I like this date huge for our blog. Um, and one thing that I've done right away um, there's a minus function. You have to uh, from date. Okay. So here I've got to go dot from um, JS date. So we do that date. Um, and then here we do the to string, right? Um, and to locale string. And here we can do date time dot long. Um, and again, um, Oh, it was date huge. One thing to realize is you might be tempted to expose this, right? Um, and that's not necessarily what you want to do. Um, so one thing we don't want to leak this abstraction, right? Um, the other thing we want to do is this name is actually terrible, um, right? Get formatted date is terrible because it's going to, um, it, it's going to, um, there's a minus function. Um, let's, let's take a look at the minus function. Um, 
you're saying here in math, basic sleep seconds. Um, Yeah, day specific times, math with multiple units, comparing dates, um, duration math, basics, um, diffs, so we could um, create a duration um, by subtracting the date from now and then um, um, do this shift to right. Um, you know, we, we don't care. Um, so what we could do here is, um, well, first of all, this, Let's let's fix this issue, right? In the date time helper, get formatted date isn't really helpful. Um, instead, the better thing to do um, is to just do blog article um, format, right? Um, and so now we're moving the format out of the function here, but this is specific to our application. So when somebody wants a date converted to a format, um, and we, we could even add the two, right? Um, so now we've got a date, um, now we've got a helper and we can say, hey, take this date and convert it to blog article format for us. Um, and um, so now we've got some, helper, some help here, but what this allows us to do um and now we need to rename this right um and what i should have done um is let's undo this right um and here we we can just use f2 um and instead of get formatted date um now we can just call it to blog article date right boom and so now in the Luxon helper, we're returning the proper date time and everything looks good. Um, and then we'll, we'll show what the benefit is here, right? So right now we're using the, the JS date and date huge, right? Um, let's go here and in our um, date time helper, now we need a provider, right? So we can say export provide date time helper um, and uh, this we'll just say export function provide date time helper um, and this is going to give us a provider um, and so inside of here we can just return that and um oh i think we want daytime helper here no what does no um Is provide now let's provide a time helper and here um, we just want use class we don't want a factory on this um, so we can just say use class not date time helper we want to use the luxon helper boom um Provider, thought provider was the one we want to return. Um, one thing we can do um, is go look at GitHub. And in my projects, nope, in my repositories, um,
I believe this is the one. Here in the libs. Um, lib injection tokens. Nope. Um, is it in data source? No. Where did I put that? Model services. Maybe this is the wrong one. Um, I thought it was providers. The under injectable test. Inside of here, nothing in apps, injectable test. Oh no, this, this was another thing where we had a circular thing. Um, Thought it was in dynamic ng signals, Angular, that, learn Angular. Barely certain it's in dynamic components. Um, and maybe it's in apps. Um, that is not it. I should upgrade this to um, Angular 17 also. Um, you know what, I can search inside of here um, and I can just say provide. The so provide animations. Static provider. Is this the one that I want? Is it static provider? I think it might be. It provider. Um, I think that might be what we're looking for. So if I change this to static provider. Static provider provider. Um, well, if we go to like our main dot ts right and we go into our app config it was provide file router oh it's environment providers that's what we want so we want to return an environment provider that was probably the easiest way to do it instead of just go look so here instead of a static provider environment providers Um, and now here, I believe we just need to Interesting, the prettier is not running. I don't think I need this. I think I can just do provider. Um, Yeah, 
Yeah, it's an alias for a type provider, a value provider, a class provider, factory provider. Um, so injectables. Yeah. Fairly certain that should work. What am I doing wrong? Um, well, let's go see. Actually, it's compiling. So it might be complaining about something that's not an issue. Um, let's just make sure that it is actually compiling? Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and just, um, just serve this again and force it to recompile and see um, what happens in that case. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Um, I don't know why it's complaining about this then. And that, that's what confused me. Um, it should understand that this is a type provider. Um, providing a type and we're using the class and it actually might be a class provider. Yeah. Um, I don't even think we need this array, but we can, we can leave it there. Um, so now that we've got that, now we can go, um, into our, um, main.ts and in our app config, um, and inside of here, we can say, Hey, um, provide, and this is where we can say, Hey, provide our date time helper. Right. And so. Now our date time helper is just like um, I like to keep all of this stuff sorted. Actually, that may not be a good idea. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, so now we've got our providers. Our date time helper works. Um, Still don't know why this is complaining, um, but anyway, now we've provided it. Now we can go use it. Um, so let's go to, well, we can start with our secondary article, right? Um, and our article title here, um, we're, we're going to change, or no, the article date. Um, what we can do is up here, we can say that, um, const article date, um, and actually let's, um, const, um, so our date time helper equals inject date time helper. So there we go. Um, and we want to, it should be provided. So date time helper. Um, does export that type. So um, it should be able to. Should be able to say, hey, import date time helper. Yeah, from Angular blog dates. There we go. And now we've got our date time helper. Um, and now we can export a computed. Um, and we can say const. 
um, article date equals date time helper. Um, and here we can just say get um, or to um, what do we call it? We call it to blog article date. To blog article date. And here we can say we want the article um, update. But this is a problem because um, the article date will only stay the same. So here we can say that this is a computed. Um, and then we can add our factory function on it. Um, and so now we are watching the article date for changes. Um, and then all we need to do here is just update this. Instead of using article, we can just say article date. And now in our blog, we should see that our dates, hopefully this works. Have I broken something? It really hates all of this. Um, let's go take a look at our console. Date time helper is not defined in provide date time helper. So we do have a problem here. Because it's a type. This is my problem. Um, export, const, um, date, time, helper, new injection token, date time helper, and this is going to be a date time helper. Yeah, that's my problem. Um, and I should have realized that uh, it's not a provider. It's not provider instead of provide. Um, no, Sir Machala, what I did wrong is I was trying to provide a type. So this is me. This is my um, .NET broken brain, right? And .NET um, interfaces uh, are still part of the code. In um, TypeScript, interfaces and types don't wind up in the generated code. Um, and so Angular wouldn't know what to provide. So we need an injection token. Um, I named my injection token the same. Um, we, we actually don't even need to ex export this type. Um, um, because it, it doesn't matter, right? Um, the date time helper that we export here is the injection token that we're going to use. Um, it's going to be of type date time helper. Actually, we do want this type just in case we want to pass a date time helper somewhere, right? Um, so now it should work. And now we see it works. Um, but. We're not getting changes here. So now it's time to go look at our secondary article. Because we are using the article date. Article date is a computed. Input is a computed.
So one thing we can do um, is we can go into our date time helper here. Um, and in our Luxon helper, we can just um, console.log that, and then we can log the date and just make sure it's being called. Um, and then, so if we do that, we can see that the Luxon helper has been called Oh, oh, that's weird. Maybe I just needed to refresh. That's really weird because before it wasn't doing it right. So now we've got the Monday, March 2nd, 2024, right? Um, we, we still haven't updated the main article, so it's not there. Um, but what would be nice um, is if we could um, instead say you know a few days ago or things like that um so let's let's say um let's say up until um up until a month ago we will use um we'll use a relative date so like you know um if it was published within the last hour, we'll say an hour ago, um, if it was published within, um, you know, the past week, we'll say a week ago, you know, stuff like that, right? Or X number of days. Um, how do we do that? Well, the nice thing about um, having an interface like this, well, and let's actually, first let's fix up the main article, right? So we'll go grab our main article components. Um, and we're going to do basically the same thing that we did in a secondary article. Um, we can just grab this in the main article. Um, got that. Um, so our article date, we're not using it, but that's fine. Um, we just replace it here, article date. So there we go. Um, and now if we go take a look, um, and I probably need to refresh, didn't work. Why doesn't that work? So we're definitely using it here. Um, and we're Definitely using it here. Oh, um, no, we injected the date time helper. Um, I don't know what causes that to not work. If I reserve it, it's going to recompile. And I'm not sure because it showed that it it understood that it needed to reload it. I think. I don't know why it didn't pick that up. Interesting. But now we've got um you know, the Sunday, February 11th, 2024, um, and, you know, our different values in our articles here. Um, and so this is where we can start seeing the power of um, a facade. Um, because now that we've got our facade in place, um, we can start doing stuff in our helper, right? Um, so here, Let's go to our relative, right? Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to um, introduce a variable here. Um, and we'll just call this um, our um, 
update to format. Boom. There we go. Um, and, oh, they're using maybes here, huh? So now we've got our date to format. Um, and we can make this a const because we aren't going to, um, we aren't going to be changing it, right? Um, and so then the next thing we can do is we can say, um, we can say that, you know, const um, from today equals, um, can we do that? Date to format diff now. That's cool. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to console.log because I haven't used this before. Um, we're going to say from today, um, and we're going to say dot to human. And let's just see what from today dot to human works out to be. Um, and actually, actually I want to do also from today, just the object itself, um, so that I can see what to human looks like and then what from today looks like, right? Um, and so that recompiled. Um, and oh, so we're negative. Um, which means that we're we're calculating into the future. Um, yeah. So we, we've got negative milliseconds, which means that um, we're, we're diffing from that date to today. Oops, sorry about bumping the mic. Um, which is not the direction we want to go. Um, instead, we want um, date time dot now um, dot diff um, and here is our and actually date to format is the wrong um, This should be named date to format. This should be formatted date. Or no, this should be parsed date. Something like that, right? Um, so there we go. So now if we go take a look, now our human readable from today in milliseconds, it's outputting it in milliseconds. Um, but at least now we can see that, um, the diff is positive. I think that's good. I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to see, um, from today. So I want to see what the options are on this to human. So this should say one day, five hours, six minutes. Um, short. Let's go take a look at Luxon's to human object. Um, so is there a place to search? Type to search. To human. So, not found. Okay. Um, API docs. And here, let's search for to human. Um, 
There we go. In duration, two human. Two human. So it returns a string representation of a duration with all units included. Modify its behavior, use list style, and any international number format option. Um, so unit display is especially relevant. Um, number format options. Um, locale options, style options, and digit options. Best fit, the default is best fit, numbering system, style options, decimal, currency, percent, or unit. What I would like to see, engineering, compact, use grouping, find display, unit formatting, currency formatting, scientific, Signs, fractions, that, I don't care. Um, so, in here, the iteration in basics, um, So you can do as minutes, shift two. So I have to, you can diff using multiple units. Um, I don't want to have to do all this math myself. I would like it to just figure out, you know, if it's less than a day, do a day. Um, let's go see if the API if the API As anything along that. So, in duration, from mills, from object, from duration like, what is that? Um, object with keys like years and hour. Oh, that's cool. Um, so, locale, numbering system, two format. Um, I don't really care about that. Um, see, two human is the one that I want. Um, but this has already got it broken down into days hours, minutes. What does two ISO give us? Okay, so that's just an ISO duration. Um, 
four. Map units. I want you to apply each unit. Arity is one or two. Um, that's that's cool. Arity, it, functional arity is either one off. That's cool. So it curries this. Oh, okay. I see what it's doing. Um, reconfigure. Put the locale, no. As. Minutes or days. Um. Normalize. So here, normalize 15 years, 255 days. Oh, but it only uses what we've got. So what we could do is we could do dot as, um, can we do months, um, days, um, hours here, that doesn't work. Does as e of duration like object. Well, I could do it here, right? Um, the parse date is um, units. Oh, I can do it that way. Days, hours, minutes, seconds. I don't want, well, we could go down to minutes, uh, but here we could go months, days, hours, minutes. Um, and so now if we go take a look, So now we've got zero day, zero months, 13 days, 20 hours, and 26.25 minutes. Um, so now we need to, um, now we could say, I, I don't like this. There's probably a better way to do it, um, but we're going to brute force this for right now. But now we can say if um, from today dot months is less than or equal to one, um, then we're going to go into this logic. Otherwise, we're going to get out um, and so. Here, now we can say um, wait, what is too relative? Representation of this time relative to now, such as in, in two days.
That works. We're going to do this for now. Um, so parse date to relative. Uh, two days ago, six days ago, one month ago, one day ago, 18 days ago. This is what I was looking for. Um, does to relative... That is exactly what I was looking for. Um, so let's go find daytime um, to relative. Where is it? To relative. There we go. So there's to relative. Um, in two days, yep. So options.base, the date time to use is the basis. Um, so long, short, or narrow. Use a specific unit uh, or array of units if omitted. And then two relative calendar. Years, quarters, months, weeks, or days. Um, I guess we're going to have to do it this way. Um, but we, we don't actually need to um, parse this as, we can just say uh, dot as months. Um, it's not like that. It's as months, yep. Oh. Um, I think we can just parse months out of this. And that'll be fine, which means we don't need the array. Um, now if we go back... 16 days ago, 25 days ago. Um, is there anything that's over, there we go. This is over a month ago. Um, and so now we're getting the full date. Um, here we're also, so, um, Interesting. Um, and if we go look at the console, we can see that it's parsing it out in fractional months. Um, that's fine. Um, but this is this is the nice thing about date libraries, um, and also, you know, about um, Just using, you know, what do we want to call it? Just using a facade, right? Um, the cool thing about this is let's say we want to use a different helper type, right? Um, and we'll, we'll do this for, for an example. Um, so in our lib, we can create a new um, TS file. 
And we can just say, hey, this is going to be our intl.helper.ts. Um, and we can say, hey, export um, class. Um, and this is our intl helper. Um, and this implements um, date time helper. Um, And we need to import date time helper. And I don't know why it defaults to doing that. Um, dot date time helper, there we go. So now we've got our new parse date. Um, and so we're using the Right, the US locale, and we could we could do more with this with international, right? Um, but parse date is a string and we're returning that parse date. Um, we're telling it, hey, use a long numeric day, month, long, year, numeric, um, and um yeah, that'll work. So now we've got this international helper, right? Um, so here, if we wanted to just swap everything, and we can just say, hey, use the international helper. Right, um, and then we import that. Um, so we're no longer using the Luxon helper. Um, now we're using the international helper. Um, and when we go take a look, Um, that is because there it is, found it. Is there something wrong with this file? Our state is redundant. Yeah, we could clean that up, uh, but we're going to get rid of this anyway. Um, it may not have picked that up. So let's go ahead and restart our server. Um, and I think this is Windows specific. I know they've been working on the Windows implementation. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you have to restart the server when you're using Windows. Um, and so now you can see that we're back to, right, um, March 7th, February, right? And we don't have like the Friday and stuff that we had before. We don't have the relative date like we had before. Um, but we were able to change the entire article um, by just in our helper swapping, you know, the concrete implementation of our um, of our interface, right? Um, so by by swapping this concrete implementation, we can change how our app behaves. Um, you know, we can go back and we can say, no, really, we like the Luxon, right? Um, so we go ahead and import Luxon, uh, and I keep hitting Shift instead of my arrow keys. So now we're back to our Luxon helper. Um, and when we go back, now we're back to, you know, the days ago. Um, and so by implementing um, a facade, we get the ability to swap easily, right? Um, and the, the cool thing about this is if we decide, no, Luxon's too heavy. We, we don't want to use Luxon anymore. Um, we want to go to our own internal implementation, right? Um, we can have a branch where we swap over and we provide this. And then once, you know, once that branch is done, we can merge it back in. And even if people are writing code, right, they're going to be using the provider. Um, so they're going to be getting our date time helper that we're providing through this provide date time helper. Um, so as soon as we're ready to swap over, as soon as we've replaced the library um, and, you know, we've got it all tested and it behaves exactly how we want it to, 
Um, our Luxon helper can be swapped for our international helper. Um, you know, we recompile and everybody's code just updates. Um, and, you know, we're off to the races, right? There, there might be some issues that we've got with um, maybe formatting or things like that. Um, but um, in our, you know, in our Angular stuff, um, or it, it doesn't even have to be Angular. It can be any kind of application. Um, you can use this, this pattern, um, you know, across all sorts of stuff. Um, and so, you know, that, that's my recommendation. Um, you know, when you're bringing in libraries, um, you never know when that library is going to fall out of, um, you know, fall out of favor. Um, do I recommend you do this for every library? Um, like, you know, say for example, Angular Material. Should you proxy Angular Material? Probably not, right? Or not proxy, but put a facade on Angular Material. Probably not. You're probably going to spend a lot more time maintaining that facade um, than it's worth, right? Um, and so when you're making decisions like that, um, you need to, you know, weigh the pros and cons of facades and um, do you want to tie yourself to it? You know, what's the history of this project? Things like that. Date time helpers? Absolutely, right? Um, you know, put a facade over the top of your date time um, stuff. You know, put a, um, put a facade over your currency library. Put a facade over your number library. That way, internally, if you're having debates and somebody feels really, really strongly and you don't care, um, here, go change our facade, right? Um, this, uh, I like to use um, an interface um, and then remember to use the injection token um, because these types don't actually exist in um, a, a runtime, right? Um, and so for the dependency injection to work, you're going to have to provide this thing. The other thing I didn't do is on this international helper, yeah, I didn't mark it as injectable, um, which we, you know, which we should do. Um, but we're, we're going to get rid of this anyway. Um, well, no, let's, let's leave it around. Um, at injectable. Um, we'll go ahead and import that. There we go. Now we're injectable. Um, and the reason we're decorating this is just to give the, um, the, the DI some hints, right? Um, you saw that it works just fine without injectable, um, mainly because we're using, um, we're, we're, we're creating our own provider. So the injectable may not be necessary. Um, but, you know, this, by marking it as injectable, well, we would probably not ever remove the, um, the facade, right, and expose these. And that's the nice thing about putting this in a library, um, is that this index.ts becomes your public API to the library. So we've got two potential, right, we've got two concrete classes that are our helpers. Um, and we can easily swap between them by just changing this one place. Um, and then, you know, the rest of our application just updates and it doesn't care. Um, so this is the, this is the big benefit um, to, um, to using, you know, facades. Um, and you could even do that internally, right? Um, there, there are patterns around facades where based on the state of the application, you can swap the concrete provider for your facade um, and create some really, really powerful patterns too. Um, so internally, you can do that too. Um, and it gives you a nice ability to isolate parts of your application from the rest of the application. So they can be, you know, changed at any point in time. Um, so you don't have to create facades for just libraries that you're bringing in. Um, but when you bring a new library into your application, um, I think it's a good time to start having this discussion. You know, hey, we want to add a library for dates. Okay, let's let's discuss. Should we have a facade, um, right? 
or hey, we want to add a library for currency. Okay, should we have a facade, right? Um, and weigh the pros and cons, right? I'm not, well, I am saying probably for dates and currencies, absolutely, right? Those, those, those change so often as to what you should use um, that it makes a lot of sense. Um, but, you know, for something like Material or <laughs> Angular, right? Angular is essentially a library. Should you put a facade around Angular? I don't know. Do you ever want to replace Angular? Um, you know, if, if you do that facade, you're going to spend a lot of time maintaining that facade to work with Angular. Um, so, you know, they you know, weigh those pros and cons. Um, I am at time. I'm actually over a little bit today. Um, but this is the kind of theory that I enjoy. Um, and then going into the code and showing, you know, how we can implement this in something um, that, that we understand, right? Um, so, you know, thank you everybody for joining. Um, thank you for all of the comments. Um, they were great. Um, I will see all of you tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Um, as it looks right now, there's one tweak and actually, it's only broken. Um, oh, did I shut down the... No, why is it saying I'm trying to use a disconnected port? That's weird. Um, so it's only broken in the case that we generate five articles. Um, and that's when the... You know, here we, we aren't getting the thing we were seeing in the beginning. Um, and it comes down to, I think, the scroll bar showing up. Um, so we'll take a look at that. Um, yeah, you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Um, thank you, Marcus. Um, I appreciate it.